Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here with National Weather Service Office in San Diego. Wanted to provide you with an update. Here we are in early December and uh, let's talk about El Nino. Let's talk about the winter so far or the water year so far since October. We're starting off dry. Even though we had thunderstorms in November, even though we had all the rain from Hillary in August, our water year starts October 1st. And you can see across the West here, these are the same images, but a different perspective. So the red is dry or much below normal. You can see central Southern California, large area of red, much below normal. Basically, we've only seen about a third to a half of our normal precipitation so far this water year. Now, if you look statewide, the snowpack is also about a third, uh, about a quarter for the Southern Sierra Nevada. If you remember last year, snowpack in these same areas were record high, all time high last year. Now let's take a look at some previous years. So we know we're in an El Nino and we'll show how we know that. But if you look in San Diego and other locations in Southern California, the wettest years in the past decade or so have actually been La Nina. 2010, 2011 is an example. Uh, 2016, 17 is an example as well as last year. Now it's true that El Ninos have brought below average. They've also bought above average precipitation. But we really aren't seeing any consistency between precipitation and La Nina or El Nino. Let's look at some of the seasonal and sub-seasonal extremes. What do I mean by that is when you start off the year really wet or when you end the year very wet or you start off very dry like this year. One example that comes to mind is December 2021. We were in the midst of our worst drought ever recorded in California at this time. The floodgates opened. Precipitation was not just above normal, it was twice the amount. In fact, snowfall set an all-time record in Tahoe December 2021. It almost was the snowiest month on record, not just December. Here's a chart that shows the record snowfall that occurred in December 2021. The season started off so wet and snowy, it looked like we were going to end the drought at that time. However, within the same year, January through March, the start of 2022, those same areas, two thirds of California, were the driest that's ever been recorded. All of this was in one year. So you have the wettest and snowiest in the first part of the winter and the driest in the second part. In fact, even in Southern California, we were second driest between January, and March, 2022. Seasonal extremes within the same year. So why do we see this and what's been happening? We talk about an amplified weather pattern, one we're going through right now. But this blocking in the atmosphere produces two things, big storms on one side and cold air and very warm air and lack of storms or drought or dry conditions. When that shifts like it did in December 2021 and last year 22-23, it allows the storm track to go through California. And since it's very persistent, it allows for frequent many storms. But when we're on the wrong side of it, it's very difficult to get much significant precipitation at all. Now we've been dealing this for several years, not just last year, not this year. There's been blocking, unusual blocking, meaning blocking that shouldn't be there, like a roadblock in the Pacific jet stream. That's the red orange area. It started all the way back in 2019, 2020. So it's not like it's new this year or last year. It's been around for a while and resulting in this very extreme weather. This is what we call amplified weather pattern. So you get really big storms, but if you're on the wrong side of them, it's dry and warm. 
Since the storms and the weather pattern is so persistent in these blocking patterns, you can get events like what just happened in Seattle. Copious amounts of rain in a major atmospheric river. But notice how narrow the atmospheric river was. And because the weather pattern is so amplified, there's just a narrow stream of intense rainfall. So instead of distributing all that precipitation like we want to see, it's really focused on one area such as the Pacific Northwest just recently. Look at the rainfall in some of the mountain areas, 10 to 15 inches already. This is the weather pattern that's produced it. We've seen more severe and more amplified, but it's the same general weather pattern. Upper level ridge of high pressure in the Pacific in a different position, but still blocking storms from us. Making a strong jet stream one that doesn't move and is not progressive, take aim and bring all that moisture into the Pacific Northwest. So the purple is colder than normal. The green and lighter green shaded is warmer in the atmosphere than normal. The two combine to make that stronger jet stream and force it to go a certain direction. So we talked about El Nino. El Nino's here. In fact, we're in a strong El Nino based on the last couple months. And you can see it's slowly still increasing in strength along the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. We can look on satellite and see that it really stands out as a large, well-established warming of the ocean temperatures, warmer than normal in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. We can also see lots of other parts of the Atlantic, which had an active hurricane season, and the North Pacific, a lot of areas are still warmer or above average, but El Nino really stands out. So we know it's there and we know it's influencing at least part of the atmosphere, but that doesn't mean it brings more storms to Southern California, at least not immediately. So what is the latest outlook information that we have for this upcoming winter? Okay. So what, when will we see the next rainfall in Southern California? It looks like we may need to wait a while. Warm conditions overall as shown here and dry conditions overall shown here over the next week to 10 days. So not a lot of hope that all that moisture from Seattle will make it here. And you can see over my shoulder that the amount of precipitation is really not expected to make further south than Highway 50 or I-80 in Central California. That's gonna be generally the cutoff line. And it looks like that continues with dry weather mid-December. Now, when you look further right before Christmas, there's been some indication that we would get a Pacific storm, at least partially. Uh, now that area of green has shrunk even more. So there's even more uncertainty if that will materialize right before Christmas. So the latest forecast indicates equal chances or even drier than average for that period, December 14th through 20th before Christmas. What about beyond Christmas into the new year? Some of the forecast indications are that after the 20th, we could see a larger, more significant storm affecting California with some of that reaching Southern California as shown on the right-hand side in green. On the left-hand side, there continues to be high uncertainty of overall below average dry conditions in California for the first half of December. Now remember, December is a big month for precipitation in California, but certainly January and February are even bigger. So when we look further out, looking at current conditions and what potentially El Nino will affect or where it will push the jet stream. The months of December, January were expected to be wetter than average. So far, that's not working out well for December. We still got a lot of the month to go. A couple big storms could change that greatly. So far, the prediction for December is not good. The official forecast for December was equal chances because of the high uncertainty. Now, when you get in January, February, and March, you can see that there is some indication that January will be wet and then February won't be. 
probably the most uncertainty we've ever had with a winter when dealing with a strong El Nino. And here, as mentioned, is the official outlook for December that was issued right before the start of the month. You can see that the equal chances across California means high uncertainty. And the forecast was calling for much above average precipitation, which looks like it's largely already occurred in the Pacific Northwest. So before we say that December, we expect it to be really wet and a quick start to this rainy season due to El Nino, the actual forecast was the contrary. The latest forecast, which gets updated once a month, is still this. It still paints the above normal precipitation for most of California and warmer than average temperatures too. But it shows that California still stands the chance since we only entering the core of our winter at being above average, at least odds or probability wise. You can see the Southeast part of the United States has the most confidence where it's already been wet late this fall and that area is painted in the dark, dark green. So overall going into this winter, there was a lot of uncertainty. The uncertainty remains. We're starting off December very dry across much of California and much of the West. And there's not a lot of hope for significant precipitation in terms of the predictions for the rest of the month until we get into late December. But unless the weather pattern shifts enough to allow that jet stream to stay more focused on California, we will continue to see a lot of those storms miss us. Stay tuned for the latest update uh, later this month in December.